Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my FL Sun T1 Pro impressions video. Uh, this is actually my second T1 Pro, uh, not because my first one was bad or anything like that, but I didn't think FL Sun was going to send me one of this for obvious reasons, but there was a massive sale on their website when the T1 Pro first like came out. It was $300 off, so I bought one with my own money. And uh, I assembled it, I did some printing with it and things like that, tested it out, whatever. I never really made a video with it. Um, and then uh, its size of it didn't really suit my needs, so I ended up selling it off. And then uh, FL Sun reached out and wanted to send this to me, so I said, Sure, why not? Especially what's happening with bamboo right now. Um, I'm not really going to go in depth with the bamboo stuff. Um, other channels have done that really well. But I did want to kind of give my perspective on... I have a uh, Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Um, I was a Kickstarter backer, like number 800 or something like that. I've had it for over two and a half years, uh, like 1600 hours on it. I did want to compare it to this printer and just kind of maybe put it out there as these potentially could be an option for you. Now, this always depends on how customer support is, um, how the reliable the machine is over time. And it's a bit of a sticky situation. I've had people who've had terrible experiences with bamboo, lots of issues, the printer not working well, but then I've also heard of a lot of people absolutely loving the printers and having no issues. And I'm one of those people. I've never had an issue with my X1 Carbon. Now, I love Deltas. Uh, I think Deltas are really incredible. And FL Sun hardware has always been really good. If you've watched my V400 review, You'll know that I really, really did not like FL Sun's implementation of Clipper. I didn't like what they were doing with Clipper and that type of thing. Um, I always prefer to like put vanilla Clipper on there or at least have access to Clipper. And I do wish FL Sun would give users the um, root username and password for Clipper um, so that they can customize the hardware they purchased however they like. Uh, we're seeing a great example of that through, from Bamboo. Um, this is my printer, right? I want to be able to do uh, things to it that I want, right? I don't want to be locked out. I don't want, uh, you know, some upgrades that might be coming in the future. Or maybe I can fix something that is, is, is bothering my workflow or something like that. I should be able to do that. And especially with a printer that's using an open source platform. But anyways, um, so I have put this up against my X1 Carbon, just a kind of basic print test and time test for people getting in, people looking for their first 3D printer. And I think this printer kind of fits that bill, is if you're looking at a P1S maybe and a FL Sun a 3D printer and you're new, um, I think that's a comparison. There are some things I like about this. Um, it does run Clipper. As I said before, you don't get the username and password, um, but I haven't seen any weird um, thermal runaway like hacking or weirdness like the V400 was. I haven't seen any weird things that they've done to Clipper. Now, I could be wrong, but as far as I can tell, this is a bit better implementation of Clipper from that standpoint. Now. I've always been the person to recommend never running your printers while you're sleeping or while you cannot monitor the printer. So regardless of the protection that's available with Clipper or with any 3D printer, I strongly do not recommend printing while you're sleeping. Um, that's my personal take on it. That's something that I do. I, I just don't run my printer while I'm sleeping and I don't run my printer when I cannot monitor it. So, the benefit of this printer is, out of the box, it is faster than a Bamboo X1 Carbon. It just simply is. Um, same layer height, same filament, it's faster. It's, it's about 45 minutes faster. Um, I'll show you some prints here. Uh, 
Near the end of the video, I'll show you up close, um, but this is my 3D Sets rock crawler. Um, I printed a door, a left door and a right door. One of them on my X1 Carbon and one of them on this printer with the same spool. The X1 Carbon printed this door in two hours and 15 minutes. The FL Sun printed this door in one hour and 30 minutes. It's a pretty substantial increase in speed and the print quality is, is really, really similar. Um, and with some further tweaking, I think this could even be better. Like I say, I went in from the, the perspective of a beginner and I just went into the profile, I click print, right? I didn't customize these, I didn't mess around with these uh, profiles. These are the stock profiles. So it, it is out of the box, plain and simple. It's faster than an X1 Carbon. Um, I've always hated companies that have to make their own slicer. Um, I know for, for some companies it makes sense, like, you know, when Bamboo Labs came out, they actually had their own slicer because they had the AMS and all this integration and stuff like that. FL Sun has their own slicer, and again, I don't know why anyone would use it other than a beginner potentially, but the problem here is there's one profile for this printer in the FL Sun slicer. I chose the T1 Pro and I looked at the profiles. There's one, a 0.2 regular profile. There's no quality one. There's no draft one. There's no different layer heights. If you're getting into a 3D printer and you're new, which I think a lot of people would be beginners getting into like an FL Sun Delta 3D printer and you want to use their slicer or FL Sun is providing a slicer for it, the whole point of that is for people can, to just get printing. But if there's only one profile, just go in Orca Slicer, add this printer and, and build a profile from there. There's already a T1 profile that works in Orca Slicer. So I was pretty disappointed with the slicer of this. I've never used FL Sun Slicer with the V400, my SR, my original T1 Pro. I just used Orca Slicer because that's what I use. Now, so they do need to put some effort into making profiles, right? I'd love to see a quality profile, not just a crazy fast um, profile, right? Some, some people want to just get print quality out of a printer. It's not always about speed. And that brings me to another point of FL Sun's marketing I don't really agree with. And I know other companies do this. It's not just 3D printing and stuff like that. Marketing is very difficult to get truth from. But the numbers that they throw out, just it's just not possible. They actually, on the clipper screen here, they report the requested speeds, not the actual speeds. They actually show the speed that clipper is requesting that the printer does, not the speed the printer is moving at. If you go to the actual clipper web interface, you will see the actual speed. So there's some shadiness there. It's not crazy harmful shadiness. It's, I, I do get it to some extent. They're trying to compete with other printers. They're trying to throw out numbers that sound good, right? Like 40,000 acceleration or 1,000 millimeters a second and stuff like that. When those numbers do not matter. Um, I want like people who are interested in getting into 3D printers or just start learning about fast 3D printers, acceleration and print speed and stuff like that doesn't matter. Like the number itself doesn't matter. I can print at 80,000 acceleration, but that doesn't mean my printer is going at 80,000 acceleration. Um, it depends on a lot of different things. Same thing with um, your uh, movement, like a thousand millimeters a second. That's fine. You might be doing a thousand millimeters a second with travel move, but that's not an actual print speed. So I wish FL Sun would really just start focusing on this. How much faster this is in hours and minutes. That's all that matters. It does not matter if your printer can print at 20, 30, 40, 50,000 acceleration. That has nothing to do with anything. 
The actual print time is what is important and I wish FL Sun would really lean into that a lot more because that is where this printer shines. And this printer is a really good out of the box, like just click print and it works. The pro version of this, um, while it's still pretty loud being CPAP cooling, I think is a, a pretty nice bump up in speed and you do get similar print quality. Uh, there is a disadvantage though with deltas and uh, we'll see here. Um, as you can see, I cannot print a rook frame on this printer. You can see how big this printer is. I cannot print a rook on this printer. And that is a downside. So that's kind of an issue with deltas having that round bed is Yes, this has a 260 printable area, but it's 260 millimeters circular, which is smaller than a 256 bamboo size. So I really want people to, to note that. Um, again, if you're getting into 3D printing and you're not looking at the biggest printer you can possibly get as far as like print size, I think this is a very good print size. Um, but I want people to know that the bamboo printers or Core XY printers, you do get more build area for your money. There's just no way around that. Um, however, if you want to print out a lot of stuff for maybe an Etsy store and you need really, really fast prints, this would be a good option for that. Like I say, if you don't need that huge build area, my recommendation would be for you to download uh, the FL Sun Slicer, download the Creality Slicer, the Bamboo Slicer, and throw some parts in there to see if they fit. That's the best way to figure out if it suits your needs. Um, it may or may not. So those are kind of the issues I have with this. It's, it's surface level stuff, as far as I can tell, like I say, the clipper implementation, I didn't see any weird um, issues with uh, changing the thermal runaway settings and stuff like the V400. Um, I don't like the marketing. Again, it is what it is. I know they're trying to compete with other printers, but actually print for print, this is faster than a Bamboo Lab printer. So this could be an option for you. At least this is clipper and it's open enough that you can connect any slicer to what you want, right? This is an open source firmware. This is much easier and you have less likely of a chance to get locked out of this as far as using it with the tools that you want because it is pretty standard clipper implementation. So that's a big, a big win. And these times with Bamboo Lab, um, my thought is I'm going to use my Bamboo Lab uh, X1 Carbon until I have to start paying for features that I didn't have to before. I use Bamboo Studio for it. I'm lazy. Uh, it's a tool to me. I literally just send prints to it and I click print. So I don't really um, have a massive issue with anything right now. I can see why people are upset and I wish Bamboo would have taken a different road, but I'm going to basically just leave it as I'm using my bamboo printer until I run into an actual problem, until I stop getting features that I've been using this whole time. Then it might be thrown off of a roof or something, or we'll put clipper on it or something like that. But um, if you're getting into 3D printing, I do at least recommend take a look at FL Sun. Go on FL Sun's uh, Facebook group, like the community Facebook group, read about these printers. Uh, you know, Google FL Sun T1 Pro, see what other people are um, experiencing with customer service and stuff, because I can't provide you information on customer service. I've been very fortunate that none of my printers have needed really major customer service. Um, and this is not a video review. I do not get enough time with these printers to actually do a review. This is an impressions. And in the history of the FL Sun printers that I've had, like I said, an SR, a V400, a second T1 Pro, they've always printed well. I've never had problems with the hardware. Um, the V400 software did scare me and that's why I didn't recommend it. But again, I know a lot of people who love their V400. And again, if you do not print 
unattended, you may be okay. That's up to you to make, right? I can just give you the information that I have and I can just give you the comparison of this T1 Pro compared to my uh, Bamboo X1 Carbon. So I'd really like to try out some Anycubics offerings for their new Core XY printers. I don't have any of those. Um, I have tried some other Core XY 3D printers that kind of been meh in the past, like the Two Trees one. Um, I had the, um, I've had a couple other, like the King Rune Core XY one. Again, they've been meh. Um, my Bamboo X1 Carbon was the top of the tier for me. It's definitely came down with what they've done with the community and stuff like that. So this potentially could be an option for you. Uh, okay, so I probably should just kind of give you a really quick tour here of the T1 Pro. Um, it's fully enclosed. The, the front door is glass. Uh, the side panels here are acrylic. And um, it does have a PEI magnetic sheet that you can remove which is nice uh, that's a pretty good upgrade from their other printers it's got a nice led there um, the camera could be a little higher but it's really for your first layer to make sure that works um, again cpap cooling the spool holder it works it's a little bit uh, odd but it, it is functional and um, the printer does come well packaged and it is a pretty easy to printer like pretty much one hour you're up and running and you can go ahead. Um, a nice feature is you can actually print via USB. I know a lot of people out there don't want to use Wi-Fi and if you don't want your printer connected to Wi-Fi, this does work. You can pop a USB drive in there and you can print right from it. Here is a sound clip or a video clip of it printing. Um, it's relatively bearable I guess you could say with the door closed I still couldn't have this in my office printing it's still too loud for me um, it's CPAP it is loud but they did make this quieter with the pro version that's probably the biggest upgrade um, with the door open so there's kind of a clip there of the uh, T1 Pro printing. Okay, here are some print comparisons here with the T1 Pro and my X1 Carbon. So this here is the X1 Carbon. So this took 39 minutes and 16 seconds. This is my Rolo Cube. This is at 0.16 layer height. So looks pretty good. There's some minor artifacts, some minor VFA. Um, you know, this is a flat surface, but overall nice. Here's the T1 Pro. This is a 19 minute print. Same layer height, same filament, 0.16. So massively faster, really, really nice print quality. Still has a few artifacts and nothing's perfect. Could definitely tune this more, but you can see the speed difference in, in a simple part like that. Here's a part for uh, my Rook 2020 uh, 3D printer. So this was the T1 Pro, 22 minutes, 0.16 layer height. So again, uh, really nice looking part. Can't complain at this, can't complain at all. And this is what I really like this printer for is, you know, a lot of these mechanical parts that you're going to be using to, uh, you know, build printers with or, or something like that. And here's my X1 Carbon. Again, it did a good job, but it took 44 minutes and 17 seconds. So, I mean, you're seeing less than half the print time for the same quality on these prints. So that's a really good example of uh, the strength of a Delta 3D printer and uh, the strength of the T1 Pro. There's a quick impressions video for you guys of the FL Sun T1 Pro. Might be an option out there for you. I know a lot of people like the FL Sun Deltas. This might be an option for you. Thanks everyone and uh, I'll catch you all on my Discord. Links in the description.